Lent Week 4 Sunday A reading from the homilies of St. Augustine on St. John's Gospel Christ is the way to light, to truth, to life. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. As these few words of the Lord are partly command and partly promise, let us do what he commanded and not merely desire what he promised, which would be presumptuous, lest he should ask us at the judgment, Have you done what I commanded, that you may obtain what I promised? What have you commanded, O Lord our God? He tells you that you follow me. You have sought advice on life. What life, if not that of which it is said, with you is the fountain of life? We must therefore get to work and follow the Lord. We must break the chains which impede our following Him. Now who can break those shackles unless he is aided by Him to whom it was said? You have loosed my bonds. Another psalm says of him, The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord raises up those who have fallen. What do those who have been freed and raised up follow, if not the light of which they have heard? I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. For the Lord gives light to the blind. We are now enlightened brothers, helped by the eye salve of faith. The Lord's spittle was once mixed with the earth to anoint the man who was born blind. We too were born blind from Adam and need to be given sight by the Lord. He mixed spittle with the earth. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He mixed spittle with the earth. So it was predicted. Truth has sprung up from the earth. He tells us himself, I am the way, the truth and the life. We shall enjoy the truth when we see face to face, for this too is promised us. Indeed, who would dare to hope for what God had not deigned either to promise or to give? We shall see face to face. The Apostle tells us, Now my knowledge is imperfect. Now I see in a mirror dimly, but then I shall see face to face. And the Apostle John writes in his letter, Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. This is a tremendous promise. If you love, then follow. I do love, you say, but what way am I to follow? If the Lord your God said to you, I am the way, the truth and the life, you, desiring truth and eager for life, would immediately seek the way to attain this. You would say to yourself, what a tremendous thing truth is, what a tremendous thing life is, were there only the means by which my soul could reach them. Do you ask, by what way? Listen to him, saying to you, first of all, I am the way. Before telling you whither, he told you, by what way? I am the way, he said. The way, where? 
and the truth and the life first he told you the way to come then where i am the way i am the truth i am the life while remaining with the father he was truth and life putting on flesh he became the way you are not told strive to find the way that you may come to truth and life no you are not told this rise up you lazy man the way itself has come to you and awoken you from your sleep if indeed you have been awakened get up and walk perhaps you are trying to walk and are not able because your feet hurt why do they have they been running over rough ground spurred on by avarice the word of god has cured even the lame look you say i have sound feet but i cannot see the way he has given sight to the blind too lent week 4 monday a reading from the homilies of origin on the book of leviticus christ the priest christ our propitiation once a year the high priest leaves the people and goes into the place where is the mercy seat and over the mercy seat the cherubim where the ark of the covenant is kept where stands the altar of incense which no one is allowed to enter except the high priest alone let me turn now to my true high priest the lord jesus christ when he was in the flesh he was with the people the whole year the year of which he himself said he has sent me to preach good news to the poor and to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of forgiveness notice how only once in that year on the day of atonement he enters the holy of holies that is he enters heaven having accomplished his work and appears before the father to make him look with mercy on the human race and to intercede for all who believe in him the apostle john aware of this atoning sacrifice by which he makes propitiation for men before the father writes my little children i am writing this to you so we may not sin but if we do sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the expiation of our sins but if we do sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the expiation for our sins Paul similarly recalls this propitiation when he says of Christ God put him forward as an expiation by his blood to be received by faith thus the day of atonement remains with us until the end of the world holy scripture says he shall put incense on the fire before the lord that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat which is upon the testimony lest he die and he shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the front of the mercy seat towards the east this taught the ancients how the right of propitiation which was offered to god on behalf of men was to be carried out but you have turned to christ the true high priest who by means of his blood 
obtained God's mercy for you and reconciled you with the Father, must not be content with the blood of animal flesh. Become acquainted rather with the blood of the word and listen to him telling you himself, This is my blood which will be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. However, do not consider pointless the words that he sprinkles the blood towards the yeast. Your propitiation came from the yeast. From there came the man whose name is the dawn, who became the mediator between God and man. This invites you to keep looking to the east, where the sun of righteousness rises for you, where light is always dawning for you, so that you may never walk in darkness, nor the lost day find you in darkness, so that the black night of ignorance may not creep upon you, but that you may always walk in the clear light of knowledge. Always have the daylight of faith and always obtain the light of charity and peace. Lent, week 3, Tuesday A reading from the sermons of St. Peter Chrysologus What prayer knocks for upon the door Fasting successfully begs and mercy receives. There are three things, brethren, three, through which faith stands firm, devotion abides, and virtue endures. Prayer, fasting, and mercy. What prayer knocks for upon your door Fasting successfully begs and mercy receives. Prayer, fasting and mercy. These three are a unit. They give life to one another. For fasting is the soul of prayer and mercy is the life of fasting. Let no one cut these three apart. They are inseparable. If a man has only one of them, or if he does not have them all simultaneously, he has nothing. Therefore, he who prays should also fast, and he who fasts should also be merciful. He who wants to be heard when he petitions should hear another who petitions him. He who does not close his own ear to a suppliant opens God's ear to himself. The fasting man should realize what fasting is. If anyone wants God to perceive that he is hungry, he should himself take notice of the hungry. If he hopes for mercy, he should show mercy himself. If he desires fatherly kindness, he should display it first. He who wishes someone to make an offering to him should make an offering himself. He is an unworthy petitioner who demands for himself what he refuses to another. Have this as your own norm of showing mercy. Do you yourself show mercy to others in the same manner, amount and readiness with which you desire it to be shown to yourself? Therefore, let prayer, mercy and fasting be one petition for us before God. Let them be one legal aid in our behalf. Let them be a threefold prayer for us. Therefore, let us seek by fasting what we have lost by our contempt. Let us immolate our souls by fasting, because 
we can offer nothing better to God. The prophet proves this when he says, A sacrifice to God is an afflicted spirit. A contrite and humble heart God does not despise. Offer your soul to God. Offer the oblation of fasting. Do this to make your soul a pure victim, a holy sacrifice, a living victim, which remains yours while it is given to God. The man who fails to offer this gift to God will have no excuse, for he who will give himself is unable to suffer want. But to make those gifts acceptable, follow them up with mercy. Fasting does not germinate unless watered by mercy. When mercy dries up, fasting suffers drought. For mercy is to fasting what rain is to the earth. The man who is fasting may prepare his heart, cleanse his flesh, weed out his vices, and so virtues. Nevertheless, if he does not sprinkle his plants with streams of mercy, he does not gather his harvest. O oh, you who fast, when your mercy fasts, your field fasts too. O oh, you who fast, what you pour out in mercy comes back as storage in your barn. Consequently, lest you lose by saving, gather in by dispensing. Give to yourself by giving to the poor man, for you yourself shall not possess what you would not leave to another. Lent Week 4 Wednesday A reading from the letters of St. Maximus the Confessor God's Mercy Towards the Penitent The heralds of the truth and ministers of divine grace who have explained to us from the beginning right down to our own time each in his own day the saving will of God say that nothing is so dear and loved by him as when men turn to him with true repentance. Wishing to show that this is by far the most holy thing of all, the divine word of God the Father, the supreme and only revelation of infinite goodness deign to dwell with us in the flesh, humbling himself in a way no words can explain. He said, he did, and he suffered those things which were necessary to reconcile us while we were yet enemies with God the Father, and to call us back again to the life of blessedness from which we had been alienated. Not only did he heal our diseases with his miracles and take away our infirmities by his sufferings, and though sinless, pay our debt for us by his death like a guilty man. It was also his desire that we should aim to become like himself in love of men and in perfect mutual charity, and he taught us this in many ways. He taught it when he proclaimed, I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. And again, those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. He also said that he had come to seek and to save the lost sheep. And on another occasion, that he had been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the same way, in the parable of the lost coin, he referred in a symbolic way to the fact that he had come to restore in men the royal likeness 
which had been lost by evil smelling filthiness of passions likewise he said just so i tell you there is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents he taught it when he brought relief with oil wine and bandages to the man who had fallen among thieves and had been stripped of all his clothing and left off dead from his injuries having placed him on his own beast he entrusted him to the innkeeper after paying what was needed for his care he promised that when he came back he would repay whatever more was spent he taught it when he said that the prodigal son's all loving father took pity on him and kissing him as he came running back repentant clothed him once more with the beauty of his glory and did not reproach him in any way for what he had done he taught it when he found the sheep which had strayed from the divine flock of a hundred wandering over hills and mountains he did not drive it or beat it but brought it back to the fold in his mercy placing it on his shoulders he restored it with compassion unharmed to the rest of the flock he taught it when he cried come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest and take my yoke upon you by yoke of course he meant commandments or a life lived according to the principles of the gospel by burden he meant the labor which repentance seems to involve for my yoke he says is easy and my burden light again teaching divine righteousness and goodness he commanded be holy be perfect be merciful as your heavenly father is merciful and forgive and it shall be forgiven you and whatever you wish that men would do to you do so to them lent week 4 thursday a reading from the sermons of pope saint leo the great the contemplation of the lord's passion any one who has a true devotion to the passion of the lord must so contemplate jesus on the cross with the eyes of his heart that jesus flesh is his own let earth tremble at the torments of its redeemer let the rocks of faithless hearts be split and now that the mighty obstacles have been shattered let those leap forth who are weighed down by the tombs of mortality may signs of the future resurrection appear now in the holy city that is the church of god and hearts experience that which our bodies will undergo the victory of the cross is denied to none of the weak there is no man who cannot be helped by the prayer of christ for if his prayer aided the multitudes who raged against him how much more does it help those who turn to him ignorance has been taken away difficulties have been made easier and the sacred blood of christ has extinguished the flaming sword which blocked the way to life the darkness of the former night has given way to the true light the christian people are invited to share the riches of paradise and the road back to the fatherland they lost has been thrown open once more to all who have been reborn unless anyone closes for himself that way 
which the faith of the thief was able to open up the activities of this present life must not fill us with anxiety or pride so that we do not strive with all the powers of our soul to be conformed to our redeemer in the way that he showed us he performed and suffered everything necessary for our salvation so that the power which was in the head might also be found in the body indeed what man was left deprived of his mercy except the unbeliever by that taking of our substance in the divinity whereby the word was made flesh and dwelt among us who does not share a common nature with christ if he has accepted him who assumed our humanity and has been born by that spirit by which he was begotten again who would not recognize his own infirmities in him who would be unable to see that taking food resting in sleep being troubled by grief and weeping out of love are the marks of the form of a servant because humanity needed to be cured of its ancient wounds and cleansed of the filth of sin the only begotten son of god became the son of man too lacking nothing of the reality of manhood and nothing of the fullness of divinity that belongs to us which lay lifeless in the tomb rose again on the third day and ascended above all the heights of heaven to the right hand of the glory of the father if we follow the way of his commandments and are not ashamed to confess how great a price he paid for our salvation in bodily humility we too shall come to share in his glory for what he predicted shall be fulfilled clearly every one who acknowledges me before men i also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven lent week 4 friday a reading from the easter letters of saint athanasius the easter mystery makes those who are separated in the body spiritually close it is an excellent thing brothers to go from one feast to another to pass from one prayer to another to advance from the keeping of one feast or solemnity to another we are very near now to that time which is for us a new beginning the commencement of the blessed passover in which the lord was sacrificed we feed as on the food of life and with his precious blood as from a fountain we always delight our souls nevertheless our thirst and burning desire are never satisfied but our savior is ready for those who are thirsty and for his love he brings to this festival day those who thirst in their hearts as he himself our savior told us if any one thirsts let him come to me and drink not only then did he satisfy a man's thirst when any one approached but each time any one asks access to the savior is freely granted the grace that comes from this feast is not restricted to one occasion nor does its radiant splendor die away but it is always available to illuminate the minds of those who long for it it is a source of continual power for those whose minds are enlightened 
and who study the scriptures day and night like that man who is called blessed in the sacred psalm which says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers but his delight is in the law of the lord and on his law he meditates day and night now that god who first instituted this feast for us my beloved has also permitted us to celebrate it each year he who handed over his son to death for our salvation for the same reason gives us this holy feast which is recalled annually this feast guides us through the misfortunes which befall us in this world and now god gives us the happiness of salvation which flows from this feast and makes us friends at the same time he gathers us all together uniting us spiritually wherever we may be letting us pray in common and offer common thanksgiving as is proper on a feast day the miracle of his kindness lies in this he brings together to this feast those who are far off and those who are perhaps separated in the body he makes spiritually close by the unity of faith lent week 4 saturday a reading from the constitution of the second vatican council on the church in the modern world all human activity will be purified in the paschal mystery sacred scripture teaches mankind what has also been confirmed by man's own experience namely that the great advantages of human progress are fraught with grave temptations the hierarchy of values has been disordered good and evil intermingle and every man and every group is interested only in its own affairs not in those of others so it is that the earth has not yet become the scene of true brotherhood rather at the present time man's enormous power threatens to put an end to the human race itself to the question of how this unhappy situation can be overcome christians reply that all these human activities which are daily endangered by pride and inordinate self love must be purified and perfected by the cross and resurrection of christ redeemed by christ and made a new creature by the holy spirit man can indeed he must love the things of god's creation it is from god that he has received them and it is as flowing from god's hand that he looks upon them and reveres them man thanks his divine benefactor for all these things he uses them and enjoys them in a spirit of poverty and freedom thus he is brought to a true possession of the world as having nothing yet possessing everything all things are yours and you are christ and christ is god's the word of god through whom all things were made became man and dwelt among men a perfect man he entered world history taking that history into himself and recapitulating it he reveals to us that god is love and at the same time teaches that the fundamental law of human perfection and consequently of the transformation of the world is the new commandment of love he assures those who trust in the charity of god 
that the way of love is open to all men and that the effort to establish a universal brotherhood will not be in vain this love is not something reserved for important matters but must be exercised above all in the ordinary circumstances of daily life Christ's example in dying for us sinners teaches us that we must carry the cross which the flesh and the world inflict on the shoulders of all who seek after justice and peace constituted lord by his resurrection and possessing all authority in heaven and on earth Christ is now at work in the hearts of men by the power of his spirit not only does he arouse in them a desire for the world to come but he invigorates purifies and strengthens the generous aspirations of mankind to make life more human and conquer the earth for this purpose the gifts of the spirit are diverse some men are called to testify openly to mankind's yearning for its heavenly home and keep the awareness of it vividly before men's minds others are called to dedicate themselves to the service of men and in this way to prepare the way for the kingdom of heaven but the spirit brings freedom to all men who are ready to put aside love of self and integrate earthly resources into human life in order to reach out to that future day when mankind 